Hi everyone. Mixed methods research designs combine the strengths of qualitative and quantitative data, deepening and enriching qualitative results with quantitative data and validating quantitative findings with qualitative data. This method offers more flexibility in designing research, combining theory generation and hypothesis testing and being less tied to disciplines and established research paradigms. In today's video, I am going to talk about the strengths and challenges of using a mixed methods research design for your research studies. Take the example of a study, examine the impact of exercise on mental health. Now a mixed methods research would allow for a comprehensive look at the issue from different angles. Researchers could begin by collecting quantitative data through surveys to get an overall view of the participants levels of physical activity and mental health and qualitative interviews would follow this to explore the underlying dynamics of participants' experiences of exercise, physical activity, and mental health in great detail. So you may think that if you are exploring the impact of exercise on mental health, there could be different impacts, there could be different issues that you want to investigate. So you could start by collecting quantitative data on the different impacts and then explore one issue, one impact more in depth by collecting qualitative data through interviews, focus group discussions. So through a mixed methods approach, researchers could more easily compare and contrast their results to better understand the phenomena as a whole. Additionally, mixed methods research design is useful when there are conflicting or differing results in different studies. By combining both quantitative and qualitative data, mixed methods research can offer insights into why those differences exist. For example, if a quantitative data survey yields one result, while a qualitative interview yields another, a mixed methods research can help identify what were the factors that influenced these differences by integrating data from both sources. So you can check for qualitative data, you can check for reliability, validity, you can also start reviewing the assumptions and limitations of each method which led to the conflicting data. You can consider the perspectives and the biases of the data sources that is the sample from which you have taken or the experiment that you have conducted. Or you can contextualize the data within the broader social, cultural and political environment. So let me give you an example that uh, I will discuss later on when I start talking about the challenges. And when I discuss the challenges, I will explain what to do when a conflicting result is obtained. So I will explain each of these points in that context of the example. Keep watching. Let's talk about the challenges of mixed methods research as well. So mixed methods research is of course labor intensive and it often requires interdisciplinary teams of researchers to collaborate. Because you're employing more than one kind of a research method, of course it takes more work. So it also has the potential to cost more than conducting a standard old qualitative or quantitative study. Interpreting the results of mixed methods research can also be tricky as it can involve conflicting or differing results. Researchers must find ways to systematically compare the results from different sources and methods to avoid bias. I will explain this in the subsequent slides. So just like you have benefits of uh, mixed methods research where you can get conflicting results which you can then use to your advantage. Remember that you can argue for why you are getting mixed methods research or different results or conflicting results. You can explain the factors that have led to this and this can also become your research as well. So just because you are getting conflicting results doesn't mean your research is worthless. Your research can, if they can explain the factors which led to the conflicting results, your research is still valuable. Let me give you an example. So imagine a scenario where a team of researchers are trying to find out who is going to win the next US elections held in 2024 between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Now you start uh, conducting something called exit polls, that is polls that you collect from people who are going to be voting in the elections and you find that uh, a certain quantitative poll has revealed that uh, Donald Trump is going to win the elections in 2024. However, when you start interviewing people who are in queue for actual voting you find out that there is more favorable result for Joe Biden as the president. Now your pre-election polls reveal Donald Trump and your 
polls during the elections or during when people are voting are revealing Joe Biden. So these are conflicting results. So when you have to try and report these results, you have to explain why you achieved or why you got these conflicting results. So here there are many factors that can influence this decision. This decision. So one of the factors could be what was the difference when you interviewed people before the actual polling date and between now. Did something change? Uh, was the image of the candidate influenced by a certain decision or a certain policy? Was there a certain scandal involved? Or you can also look at where did you collect this data from? Was this collected from an area where Joe Biden was more popular or where Mr. Trump was more popular? You can also uh, review who were the people who were providing this data. Was it from a certain demographic? Was it a certain section of people who are maybe uh, always favoring a certain candidate? Um, uh, so on and so forth. So when you start looking at these results, when you start looking at these factors, you can start drawing conclusions as to why your results differ. Because at the end of the day, although you try to make sure that your results are not differing and they are not, um, they are not contrast in one contrast to one another. If you have taken care of the variables, if you have taken care of the extraneous variables, or you have taken care of the biases and still getting conflicting results, then it is time for you to start comparing the evidence from different sources and looking at the similarities and differences. You have to analyze the evidence and identify the main points, the assumption, the methods, the implications for each source. You have to start answering questions like what were the key claims or finding of each source? What were the underlying assumptions and premise of each source? How did each source collect, measure or interpret the data? What are the implications or consequences of each source? So by comparing the evidence, you can then find common grounds or gaps in the information and understand the strengths and weaknesses of each source. So this is how you explain conflicting results. So just because you've got conflicting results doesn't mean that you cannot explain them or that you have to carry out the data collection once again. So make sure that before you employ the mixed methods research design, you have thought about these things. You have thought about um, why a conflicting result may occur. What are the factors that may lead to conflicting results and address them before you go about collecting the data. Then even if you get conflicting results, then you can explain them or analyze them by way of factors and provide a deep understanding of that topic, which will make the reader or the examiner happy. They will understand that you have actually understood the phenomena. You have looked at it from different angles. You have a holistic understanding and view of the topic. So these are the different advantages and challenges of conducting mixed methods research, because if you don't uh, plan all this in advance, there could be a possibility where your research is then refuted. People will not take it seriously. Uh, but if you go about it in a scientific and methodical way and show that you took all the steps to uh, remove any sources of such bias or conflicting results, then that results or that research becomes uh, valuable. So I hope you like this video. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. I am making a few series of videos on mixed methods research and trying to keep them short so that it's engaging and not too long and boring for you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon with my next video. Bye for now.